Hey, my name's Ed, welcome to my channel. I make, modify and mend things. And in this video, I'm gonna be making the drawer fronts and the cabinet doors for the kitchen in my 43 foot narrowboat Joshua. Bloody hell, that's a mouthful. <laughs> and more importantly, I finished connecting the gas, which means I can finally make a cup of tea. Oh, but first, I've got to move the boat. So I'm taking advantage of a break in the weather to have a little cruise. I'm actually going to my favourite spot on the canal, which also happens to be the spot where I spent the last night before I moved off a year and a half ago before I started this renovation. So I'm really looking forward to being back there. This spot is actually really far from the nearest road. It's about a mile in either direction to the nearest bridge. And that means it's kind of inconvenient for the renovation, but it's so quiet, I just love being there. There's some CRT work up ahead. I don't know if the towpath's closed or what, but I'm gonna pull over. I'm almost at the point where I wanted to get to. If I have to moor here, that's fine. But I'd prefer to go around the corner a little bit. It'd be quite nice here, actually. This is fine. It's wide enough. Yep, this place will do. There's actually a boat moored in the, the place I wanted to go. But, um, which is unusual because it's actually kind of a rubbish spot. It's right in the weeds, which is kind of why I like it. But there's a boat already there, so this spot's fine. And my panels are right in the sliver of sunlight coming through the hedge, so that's nice. I'll have a full charge. Job done. To make the door fronts and the drawer fronts, I bought this tongue and groove router bit set off eBay for 10 quid. And then I was surprised when the groove one was massively out of balance. Uh, it was so bad that I, I felt in danger when I turned the router on. Um, so I've made these just using a straight router bit and the router table. Um, these are the drawer fronts and they're not great. I mean, they, they go together and they're okay. Uh, I'm happy with the fit just about, um, but obviously with the proper tool, it would be way better. So I've ordered a 90 pound pair of router bits for doing tongue and groove, and I'm gonna wait until they get here before I do the door fronts. Um, but for now, these are good enough. And all I've done is I've made the rails, I think these are called the rails, um, with a groove in, and then a I've made the styles, I think these are called the styles, it might be the other way around, and then these fit into the rails like that. Like I said, the fit, the fit is just good enough for me to be happy with, um, and I can sand this flat and make it nice once it's all glued together. So all I'm gonna do now is fit the panels into these and then glue them all up. There we go. All right, that's one done. These clamps are a bit ridiculous for this, but uh, I don't have anything smaller. There we go. Right, now I just need to leave these to dry. Then I can clean them up. I've skipped a few steps, but the drawer fronts are now fitted to the drawers. Um, I glued them up, which you just saw, 
Um, but then since then I finished them. I put uh, the Oz, same Osmo oil that I used on the floor. Um, I've used on these on the timber bits on the front. Um, and then I fitted them to the drawers much the same way that I fitted um, the draw fronts that are down below on the kickboards uh, in my last boat video. Um, so I didn't bother filming that because it's exactly the same process. I machined a slot along the bottom um, and these ones I've actually done pocket holes, sort of ghetto pocket holes um, on the inside so you don't see the fixings uh, from the sides. Um, but yeah, so they're in and they're working um, really nicely actually. I'm really happy with these. Um, so that's the wide one and this is a slightly narrower one. Um, yeah, really, really happy. Um, they work really nicely and they look really nice, I think. I just need to put handles on them now. I need to find some handles, but I think I'll wait for the handles before, um, until after I've finished the, the cupboard doors. The only thing is this junction here, um, there's only enough space for an 18 mil sheet here. So the, these are 20 mil thick. So I'm gonna have to plane down the cupboard door here to 18 mil to give this drawer clearance to make sure it can still open when this cupboard door is closed. That's the only thing. Uh, and I've, so now I've taken the measurements for these cupboards um, and my expensive router bits have arrived so I can do the rest now. So I'm back at the workshop and I found out the last of the ash um, that I've got and these I'm going to use this to make these cupboard doors from. I was looking for pieces that are similar in colour and grain structure but typically they're all pretty different. These two are fairly similar in colour, but the grain looks fairly different. Um, because on the drawers, I made the rails from a different piece from the styles. And it doesn't come across that well on camera, but the vertical bits, which are the styles, I looked it up, um, are actually slightly lighter than the rails. And it's okay, but if the styles and rails were different from each other, too different, I think it would look really rubbish. Um, I don't have enough timber to do that to make all the doors match. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one door from one piece of timber. So at least that door is all from the same piece. Um, I've got my new tool so I can cut the tongue and groove uh, much, much better quality than the other one. Also cost 10 times more, actually 10 times more. Um, so I would expect it to be significantly better. Let's get on with it. The first thing to do is to cut the different lengths that I need um, and I've already gone ahead and worked out the lengths that I need. I drew out these, um, I drew them out and worked out obviously the styles which are the vertical bits, uh, they're easy because they're just the length of the height of the door. The rails are obviously minus the two, two uh, styles plus the length of the tongue on either end so I've gone and worked all that out and got my final dimensions and the quantities of each that I need. Uh, so I just need to cut all those bits out now. So that's all the material cut for the doors. These two are going to remain at 20 mil thick. Um, that's the breakfast bar door and the door next to the fridge below the existing drawers. Um, and these two are going to be below the sink. I need to run these through the planer before I cut the tongue and groove on them, um, simply because they have to fit behind the door and the drawer that are already there. Um, so these are going to go down to 18 mil. I'm going to leave these at 20 because I've already made the draw fronts at 20 mil thick and I think it'd be a bit weird if the door was thinner than the draw. Um, so they're going to stay at 20 mil. 
uh, I'm just going to plane these down to 18. So before I run anything through the router, I'm going to do the planing on these. As you can see, this isn't a router and I'm not routing the stiles and rails for the cupboard doors because the router that I have mounted in my router table doesn't have a 12 mil um, shank holder thing that holds the bits, which I thought it did, but apparently it doesn't. It has two sizes, one of them's quarter inch and the other one's slightly bigger, but not as big as half inch. So I can't actually mount those router bits in my router. I do have a bigger DeWalt router, which you can probably see in the background, um, but I haven't owned it very long. And I, I'm sure I did not cross thread the, the chuck on it. Um, I've only used it once since I bought it, and that was to do the uh, roundover on my worktop. And it, it seemed fine then. However, the um, chuck has all, it did seem a bit stiff when I used it, and it turns out it was cross-threaded. I'm sure it, I didn't do it. So I think it might have been like it already, which is really annoying because um, the person I bought it from never mentioned it. Anyway, it's cross-threaded and it actually pulled some threads off. Once I'd noticed, I tried to put it back on straight and sort it out and uh, ended up pulling the first couple of threads off. So I did actually file down to good threads uh, on the, like the collet holder, but... Uh, in doing that, now when you have the collet in the, in the chuck, um, the, the nut no longer reaches the threads because the collet holds the nut a bit higher. Uh, so, long story short, I can't route the rails and styles until I either repair that router or I buy a new one, which I don't want to because I've just bought that one. Um, and yeah, get, get a different router or repair that one. Uh, but buying, I'm going to have to find a router for spares, which is the same model as that one, which could obviously take, well, I don't know, how long is a piece of string? So it's looking like I'm going to have to buy a new router because I just want to get on with the job. Anyway, I'm going to think about what to do this afternoon and uh, hopefully come up with a solution that's not going to cost me a fortune because I can't afford that. <laughs> so I bought a new router. Now I just need to modify the router table to fit and then finally I can get on with these doors. After a lot of messing around, it's finally set up uh, in my router table. Don't ask me why my hair's wet. <laughs> you can probably hear the rain outside. I had to go to the boat to try and find these little countersunk screws. Turns out I didn't have any, but I needed to move the boat anyway, and it is piercing it down with rain. So I got soaked. Anyway, that's done. I've got the screws or some screws. I've set up the router and I've got it. I've done a cut. It feels so sketchy without the fence, but I can't fit the fence on because my little uh, gap that I've got for the bit isn't big enough and I'm not willing to open it out because this is the only bit I would need to open it out for. So 
I did some reading and you don't need a fence anyway. Um, especially with this bit, it's got a bearing as a stop, so. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to cut. I am really terrified of this bit because it's, well, it just looks terrifying. Um, I'm really worried about my fingers. The temptation to wear gloves is so strong, but it's also a really bad idea to wear gloves when you're drilling or routing or anything like that. So ugh, I just, I'm really scared of this, these bits. But it's set up, so let's do it. I've cut the grooves on these 18 mil pieces. So now I've got to cut the tongues on the rails. Yeah, on the rails. Um, which are these bits, the shorter bits. Um, so I've put in this, the router's unplugged by the way, so it's okay that I'm putting my hands near it. I've uh, put in the tongue bit and I've lined it up and I, I've used the, the groove to line up the tongue. If this wants to focus, it's probably past its minimum focus distance. Um, yeah, so I've, I've used the tongue to line up this bit. And actually there is a little bit of, uh, my route table is just made out of MDF and I made it, so it's not brilliant. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's in about the right place now. Um, it's difficult to see. It's only it's it's wrong if I line it up around there, or if I line it up to the blades here. Um, it's wrong. I I have to line it up where the material is going through the the cutter, uh, and you'll just have to believe me that that is bang on. So right now, I think this is the really scary bit because it's on the end grain. Uh, now I'm going to cut the tongues on these rails. Wow, that looked cool when I cut that from above. Um, however, because this is on end grain, uh, I got some pretty epic tear out. Uh, so I don't know if I can rescue that bit. And also that's a little bit tapered. Um, I might have to redo this bit, which is a shame. Um, I might see if I can rescue that. Uh, I don't think there's any rescue in it. Uh, right, I'll do the rest of it, but with a, with a block. Yeah, this is why I need a fence. Okay, I need to sort out a fence. So it's a few days later. I've modified my fence to fit the tongue and groove router bits. And I've been doing a little bit of research and I'm going to use a piece of scrap to feed the rails through the router bit for the tongues with. Uh, that's gonna help me push them square along and it's going to avoid that like weird snipe that I was getting. Um, and it also means my fingers are well out of the way as well. Um, so let's give it a second go. Okay, something weird happened there. When I fed it through, it kind of got to a, a point and then kind of kicked up. Think it's because, yeah, it's when it touches the bearing. So the fence is actually allowing me to come in closer than I I should be, and then when I reach the bearing, it kind of locates on the bearing and pushes itself away. But it's already cut this front, like 12 mil or so. Oh, so this piece is ruined too. This is so much harder with the proper tool than it is manually with a straight bit. I would have had this all done by now. Okay, I've reset the fence and now I'm going to try again. Oh, 
Well, that worked much better, um, but I've ruined this piece uh, on the other end. So I'm gonna have to cut another piece and redo that. So I've cut two new rails, uh, having destroyed the other ones, and I'm gonna cut the tongue on them. Now set the jig up properly. So you probably saw that on the first one, the uh, the tongue got hung up on the on the fence there. Oh, and uh, and then it had a kind of a little step when I continued through. And I'm now worried that that's actually put an impact on, or it's going to have an impact on the tongue, and how that fits on the style. Uh, I can't see a visible step, but there is going to be one because I saw the piece of wood move. And I also think that means the tongue isn't cut long enough now. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but this is way harder than doing it with a straight bit. So I've cut the tongues on the rails for all of these, well, for these four, for these two doors. And they fit together okay, but it's not amazing. Um, I probably sound disappointed because I am. I've spent a lot of money on this tool and I thought it was going to make this so easy, but it's been the opposite experience, if I'm honest. Um, they fit together pretty loosely, which I was really surprised with. I thought they were going to be a much tighter fit and you can see there's a bit of a gap there. And again here, there's a bit of a gap. I think that's probably my cutting. It's something to do with my fence, I think. Um, the fit on my drawers that I've just made and the doors in the back of the cabin, which I made before I started making YouTube videos, are much, much better. It's a much better fit than this. And I made those manually with a straight cut bit in the router table. Um, I think I think the problems I'm having now are related to the fence or my router table. Obviously, I've also changed the router, so it could be that. I've got a much bigger hole in the table now that the material can fall into. Um, and yeah, I when I put a straight edge up against here, I mean, a piece of wood is not a straight edge, but I, I just put my steel rule against this and there is an, actually a slight con concave shape uh, right in the middle where the cutter is, um, which could be um, the wood eroded away because this is the area where I'm always feeding material. Even if it's a short piece, it's here, whereas obviously a longer piece is going to be rubbing here and here. But every single piece of material I feed through here goes probably from here to at least here. And that's the area where it looks. And you can even see kind of it's a bit lighter there. It might be that too. But I'm just a bit disappointed because, yeah, the ones I made with a straight cut bit and just careful measuring were way, way better in terms of fit than using these bit, these expensive router bits. And now I'm tempted to go back to my old method for the 20 mil doors because I know I can get a much better fit. I'm going to have a cup of tea. You can probably hear the kettle boiling and then I'll come back and decide what to do. So I have decided to use a straight cut bit and do this the old fashioned way, the way I've always done it. As much as it pains me because I spent a hundred quid on that special tongue and groove bit set, I'm confident I can get a better result doing it myself. So for these doors that are 20 mil thick, I'm going to do that. I've just set up the router, the straight cut bit in the router, and uh, I've cut this test piece and it fits over the nine mil ply. That's the other reason for doing it this way. The inserts in the middle of the doors are gonna be made from nine mil ply. The tool I've bought cuts a six mil um, slot, which means I'm gonna to have to do further work on the inserts because I don't actually have any six mil ply um, to get the inserts to fit. Whereas if I do this myself using this eight mil bit, um, I can cut a nine mil slot, which is what I've cut on this test piece that fits really nicely on the insert uh, piece of ply. So that was also a factor that made me decide to do this. So I'm gonna get on and 
do this lot the way I know and I'll bring you back once they're all cut. I cannot believe this has happened. The bit snapped. I didn't think I was taking a massive cut. I'm only taking half the depth and then I was going to adjust the height of the bit and take the rest of it. But apparently I was taking too much and uh, yeah, the bit snapped. Luckily it hasn't damaged this piece. Oh, this has given me so many problems. I cannot believe how many problems I'm having with this. This is one of the last jobs for the kitchen and I just feel like the kitchen is fighting me so much. I've got, I don't have another 9mm router bit. Um, I've got this, I think this is a 6mm bit. bit. Um, so I'm going to have to use this and be really, really careful because this is even thinner than that other one was. Um, and then just take tiny, tiny bites out at a time. It's going to take me so much longer, but... So finally, I've finished the door frames. Now I am kind of only just about happy enough to use these. I think my disappointment is a symptom of my expectations for these because I had that really expensive tongue and groove route a bit. I thought that maybe these were gonna be really easy to make and they were gonna be perfect. Um, but I think I'm now limited by my tools um, even though I've got that nice bit set, I'm still using this router table, which I made myself. I'm not convinced that that's straight. In fact, I'm, I'm almost certain it's not. Um, also, I'm, I don't know how flat the top is. It's 12 mil MDF and it's got a different router in it. I didn't have the right screws. It didn't come with a throat plate. So I've got this massive hole in the top of it. And I think a combination of all those things kind of has all come together. And these ones I've just done manually myself are better. Um, the gaps are smaller, the straights are cut, the, the cuts are straighter. I did snap another router bit um, after I snapped that first one, but luckily it was only on the last cut and it was still cutting. So I just did carry it on and it finished the cuts. So the next thing to do is to cut the ply for the apertures of these, for the panels. Um, the slots or the grooves are 12 mil deep on all of these doors. They're nine mil wide on these two that I just did myself with, that, with the straight route bits. So all I need to do is um, make panels or cut panels that are 24 mil bigger than this aperture and they'll fit straight in. For these, I need to cut a panel that's 24 mil bigger and then cut a 12 mil uh, rebate on the back, take three mil off it basically um, with the router table. Hopefully that goes okay. Uh, so that they will fit in this six mil slot um, because the ply I'm using is nine, nine mil. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I've cut all the panels uh, to go in these doors. These two, the grooves are nine mil wide. So the nine mil ply just slots straight in here. Uh, the grooves on these ones, which I cut using the tongue and groove tool are six mil. Um, so I've had to cut um, using the router table. Um, can't pull that one apart now. Um, a slot, well, not a slot, but I've had to put a rebate on the back uh, just of three mil so that this nine mil ply fits in the six mil grooves. So I've done that and it fits really well. Um, there's barely any, my cutting is getting more accurate these days. So you can't really tell when you look at the back that there's a, a rebate in this. It just looks the same as these. Um, so now I've done that, uh, I just need to paint these panels um, and then sand these frames. Some of them, there's a little bit of a step uh, on the joins, not so much on these ones I did myself. Uh, the 20 mil wide thick doors, but the 18 mil thick ones, because of the planer, there's a bit of a step because these aren't uniform thickness. All my tools are either second hand or made by myself. So they're not great. And uh, 
I think because my skills are getting better now, um, the the variations and the inaccuracies and my tools are now actually becoming the limitation rather than my skills which is really frustrating because I feel like I'm way better now but then when I started this boat project but my tools are now starting to show me up which is kind of good and also annoying at the same time and I think that's the reason I've had so much trouble with these doors uh, I just need a proper router table because my own homemade one is isn't good enough so yeah, I'm just going to take these panels out, get some paint on them, um, and then I think what I'm going to do is just sand these when they're assembled, um, because then I'll, I'll know where they're all going to be. So I'm going to get on with that. I didn't film it because it's so boring, but I've painted all the panels. Um, they're painted both sides and they're dry now. So the next thing to do is assemble the doors with these panels in. Then I can sand and finish them and then finally get them hung. I wanted to make sure that the least amount of bad happens as possible. Damage control, he told himself. And Bill is clear on this point. He meant damage control for his whole crew, not just the dogged-headed National Steroid Task Force is hovering over his shoulder. Bill A little before five, two different, and he said it's no big deal. So the doors are all glued together now and I've put the first coat of finish on the two doors that go below the drawers um, and I'm just about to put the first coat of finish on these two here. These are the ones that go under the sink. Um, when I was putting the footage of me moaning about how my tools were <laughs> hindering my work, uh, I couldn't help but think a bad workman blames his tools. And ironically, the doors that I made with the router bits have actually glued together much better than the ones I did myself. <laughs> I've got a massive gap on this one. This is one that I did myself with a straight router bit. I don't know if that's because the panel's too big or if the tongue and the groove is just not good enough to fit together well enough. Maybe the tongue's too long. But there you go. Um, every day is a school day. Um, so yeah, these ones have actually gone together way nicer, um, although because I'd had to plane them down and my planer, I think, something's funky with it because these were definitely really varying in thickness along the length. Um, that's why I used a planer and not the thicknesser because I noticed it part way through. Um, so yeah, uh, these are now glued together. First coat of finish on these, just about to do the uh, first coat on these. Uh, I'm not going to film that because it's so boring, but yeah, once that's done, uh, I'll let them dry and then I can put the hinges on and swing them. So the time has finally come to fit the doors into the kitchen. And I've drawn up some little templates to help me drill the holes in the right place. Um, I spent quite a long time this morning on the internet trying to find the dimensions for drilling the holes. They were actually all on the website I bought them from, but it took me a while to decipher them and translate them into something that I could draw in Fusion 360. And for some reason in the free version of Fusion 360, you can't just print the drawing. You have to print out a full like technical drawing with the, the frame and everything. Uh, and the lines are probably so faint on the actual drawing, I don't know if you can see it. Um, so I'm having to cut these out. And then the idea is I'm going to line these up on the cupboards and on the doors um, so that I get the holes in the right place. Um, I've just offered up the doors to the cabinets and I can already tell they are really not going to fit well. Um, I mean, I think the cabinet under immediately under here is going to fit quite nicely once I've got the alignment right. But the one next to the fridge, the cupboard isn't square. Um, I don't know how that's happened. I think what's actually happened is it's moved 
um, when I was aligning the drawer because I did have to undo one of the sides to get the drawer slides to slide nicely. So that one is going to look horrible. The, the door is not going to fit well on the front at all. But at this point, I don't know if I can be bothered to do anything about it. Um, it's going to work. It's going to open and close, and that's all it has to do. So at some point in the future, I might decide to remake it. And that's one of the ones that's got a big gap as well. So maybe I'll remake the door in the future. It's my first ever go at making a kitchen, so it's not ever going to be perfect. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got these little alignment jigs. So I think I'm going to start off. I've already checked under here. This one is going to need some fettling, and I think I'm going to need to do something funky. The cupboard door here uh, is going to require some work um, because I've aligned the drawer front to the edge. So this is technically inset. Uh, rather than an overlay door and the hinges I've bought are full overlay which means the cupboard door will come to this edge here um, you can buy half overlay which half overlaps this piece of ply and inset which puts the door actually flushed with the frame um, so obviously neither of those options are going to help me what I might en actually end up doing because I've got full overlay hinges is but piece of 18 mil ply underneath the the hinge plate and that will bring the door this way enough that it will line up with the drawer and give me space for the doors here and it's this is the the stupid way that I've designed this kitchen because um, I don't know what I'm doing but I think I'm just going to do little bodges like that to get it finished now so I'm just going to mark the position of the holes I need to drill uh, using this template I'm going to put the hinges 150 mil from the top and the bottom of the door, just because that looks about right. Uh, so I've got my template, I've got a braddle, and I'm just going to hold that template on and mark the position of the centre of these holes. Luckily, with my new router, I got a 35 mil. No, it's not a hole saw. I can't remember what it's called. But it's a 35 mil bit anyway, specifically for drilling holes for these hinges. So that's a bit of a result, despite all the malarkey with the router. So yeah, I got this 35 mil bit with a load of router bits. So that's handy. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna drill these holes. These have got to be 11 mil deep. That should be four mil from the door edge if my calculations were correct doesn't look like it but we'll see and this has got to be 11 mil deep I'm gonna check the depth of that I've got to say this drill bit cuts lovely that's uh, 8 mil I am very paranoid, I'm going to cut through. I think that's probably about right. Tent. Yeah, it's scary drilling into your doors like this. Tiny, tiny bit more. That's as much as I dare go. Yeah, that'll do. Right. That's a lovely drill bit. I really like that. It's really sharp. This is where I find out if I've marked my holes correctly, I suppose. Ah, not bad, not bad. I'm actually gonna pilot drill these because I do not want to split this wood. <laughs> oh, I've dropped the screw. Where on earth did that go? There it is. Okay. 
So now the hinges are on the door, I need to put the hinge plates on the cupboard. Um, I want to make sure this cupboard door is spaced far enough away from the, the drawer that it clears it when the drawer's got a, full of stuff and it's got a heavy load in, but not too far that the gap looks massive. Um, and I was going to say five mil, I might say four mil. Five looks a bit too big. I'm going to say four mil. So I put the hinge at 150 mil from the end of here. So I'm going to say 154 mil from the bottom of this drawer down. Um, actually, I should make sure that the bottom of the drawer of the cupboard door isn't going to interfere with my under counter drawers. I don't think it will at four mil. Maybe it will. I can always skim some off the bottom of the door. It doesn't matter. 154 is there. Okay. I'll just line up the mark. Using my bradle. That should be where I need to drill. Just make sure that these holes do correspond to the, yeah, they do. That looks pretty good. Now the screws for these are actually bloody massive. So I'm gonna have to drill quite a bit of a larger pilot hole than I did in the door. Just don't wanna go all the way through. I think I'm going to have to go further than that. That's as far as I dare go. There we go. Right, that's one done. I'll bring you back once I've done the other one and it's time to fit the door. All right, hinges are on the door, plates are on the cupboard. Now it's the moment of truth. I'm not expecting this to fit very well, uh, if it fits at all. So these are clip-ons, so I think I'll just do that. Clipping on, is it? Maybe that is. Does it close? Yes. <laughs> However, there is an absolutely massive gap at the top. Oh my gosh, and the soft close is insanely soft. Why does it swing out? Right, I think that's an alignment thing. Right, let's uh, try and adjust. So, as you can see, there's a massive gap here. Um, and that is making a massive gap at this end of the door. So I think I need to adjust this top hinge. I don't know if there's enough adjustment on this. I'm slightly worried about that, but we'll see. So on these hinges, there's adjustment here and here. The, the, the back screw is adjustment backwards and forwards this way. And this, the front screw here is um, this way. So 
my issue is obviously that way so let's adjust that luckily this this one is the one with the most adjustment on it that adjusts the amount of overlay right let's see if that's done anything yes it has here it's still not solved this issue but i think i can kick the bottom this way that will help so it might be six of one half a dozen of the other so what do i need to do that way i need to bring this one this way let's see if that's done anything it's better it's definitely getting better let's fiddle with that until it's right so i mean try and ignore the beautiful dappled light but it is it's in my way at the moment um, that's about as good as this gap is going to get um, it, you probably can't tell on camera it probably looks fine but there's about a one mil discrepancy from one end to the other um, but I don't want the um, the ed, the line along the edge to be too far out I can't get it perfect and have the gap uniform so I'm gonna have to make a compromise somewhere this is the first cupboard I've ever made, so I'm going to have to kind of reel in my expectations a bit. And my friend Anthony, who is an insane, insanely good woodworker, uh, has taught me to embrace the imperfections. Like I said, this is the first stuff I've ever made, so I'm going to have to just be comfortable with the fact it's not going to be perfect for my first time. Uh, and you can see the gap hit the how out of square my cupboard is, it's pretty bad. But I think once I start living on board here, I'm gonna forget about things like that. You're never gonna look at these day to day, so. That's good enough for me. I think if I can disable one of the soft closers, I think I will because it's a little bit too soft. Um, I mean, it's a lovely action, but um, yeah, I just don't like the way it kind of bounces. And I think if I can disable one of the soft closers, that will probably stop that from doing that, but we'll see. All right, this is kind of stupid, but I think it's gonna work. So because this door has to sit essentially inset, but it's gonna be on the outside of the frame, uh, I've screwed this batten to the side, which is gonna space the hinges out I've bought, which are f uh, full overlay. So essentially the door will full overlay over this piece which means it will be at the edge of this piece, which will give me the same spacing as the drawer. Uh, it's kind of a stupid solution, but it's gonna work, I think, anyway. Um, it's sort of ugly, but once this is painted and the door's closed, you're not gonna see it. When I reach in the cupboard for a tin of beans or whatever, I'm never gonna look at that. Uh, so I wanna get this project done and move back on here. So I'm doing things like this now, apparently. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay, I'm fine with it. I think I'm, I've made peace with the fact there's going to be stuff like this. So now I just need to put the hinge plates on, put the hinges on this door, um, and then I can hang it. Let's see how well I did with this one. Right. <laughs> or even if my theory worked. Okay, I can already tell that needs to go down a bit, but that's okay, I think. Ooh, not bad. Not bad. And needs a little bit of adjustment, but other than that, it's pretty good. I think it's safe to say that's better than the other one. I really don't like the soft close on this. I don't like the way it swings. If anyone can tell me why it's doing that, I'd appreciate it. Now I don't like that bounce. But that fits better than the other one. I'm happy with that. After some adjustment, that'll be fine. So for this corner arrangement, um, I was thinking about doing a face frame like this um, to get the cupboard out of this corner and avoid any potential collisions here. Um, so I was gonna do a face frame and I've bought these little stubby versions of these concealed hinges, and you can see they're designed to go on like this. 
But after what I've done with this one, I'm thinking I'll do the same here. And rather than have this batten this way round, I might just have it flat against there. Um, and then I can do the same thing with these. I won't have to buy new hinges. I'll just use these um, like that instead. However, I do have a, a supporting bracket under here, which is going to get in the way of that. So I just need to probably move that a little bit. And then, because uh, it'd be nice to have this the full, the full height and then it will be kind of more hidden, not as obvious. Uh, so I'm going to do that, I think. And then that means I can get these um, fitted without having to take this to the workshop and rip it down. Because I was going to rip this down to the correct to like the correct width, but I think I only need 18 mil to bring it out enough. So I'm going to do that. Status update. So I've loosely fitted this with one screw on each hinge. Um, so it fits this way. Um, and it's really square, as you can see from the way that it lines up with this door on this side. However, when you go to close the door, it gets to here and then it's, it collides in the corner down there. Um, I don't know, it's probably hard to tell, but it's now trying to pull the drawer. It's levering against this door and the drawer uh, to the point where you can see it's pushing that. So that is obviously not enough of a spacer so i'm gonna then now i'm gonna now take this all apart turn this 90 degrees so it is a face frame refit these hinges this is way too big i think i only need 25 mil and i think this is like 35 um, or even 40 but what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn this 90 degrees fix it in put these hinges on it and then measure the gap with the door closed and then i know i'll know how much i need to take off of this or make another piece. Okay, this door is now fitted. Um, I just turned that spacer 90 degrees. And as you can see, there's now way too much gap there. Um, the door opens easy, obviously. There's plenty of space. Um, but it doesn't need to be that big. So what I'm going to do is measure how much space I have from this door to this door. And that's what, 38 mil. So I think I'm gonna take 38, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna take four mil um, for like safety. So 34, so I can take 34 mil off of this spacer. Um, and I think that'll be okay then, because it doesn't kick out very much. Um, if you look at that, if you look at that screw hole there, uh, the one on the left hand side, which is half covered, it barely kicks out. When, when the door's closed, it, from, uh, from closed to open, it doesn't actually kick out much. Um, and it was, the problem was it was open before. So as long as I measure it in a closed position, then that is the furthest it kicks out. So. I'm going to take this spacer to the workshop. I'll probably replicate it to be honest. I'm not going to I'm not going to work on this one because it's got all sorts of holes in it where I've um where I've been test testing it. So yeah, I'm going to replicate this uh minus 34 mil. And then this this door should then fit in the corner and be a really nice fit right in the corner there. And then once that's painted white, you you'll barely notice it. So that's how I'm going to get around that problem. Right, so after half a day of fettling, uh, all the cupboard doors are in and working. So this one in the end, I paint, I made that strip. All I did was stuck a bit of nine mil ply underneath the 18. So that's a strip of 18 and a strip of nine mil together, glued up, um, sort of sandwiched together. And, and then painted obviously. And that works lovely. And now that corner junction, I'm really happy with it, to be honest. Uh, when you look in there, it just you can just see the white of the, and it just looks like the carcass of the cabinets. Um, and yeah, that that actual that interface or intersection in the corner is way better than I, I was expecting it was going to be. So I'm really happy with that. Um, the drawer <laughs> uh, has clearance. 
just about. It's like millimetre perfect. Um, it might, once it's been used a bit, and uh, this door's not closed properly, uh, once it's been used a bit and it's all a little bit rattly and wobbly, I might have to readdress that, but at the moment it works beautifully. Um, all the kick drawers work and they've got loads of clearance. Um, there's about five mil clearance uh, on this one. Uh, I did actually take uh, about five mil strip off of the bottom of every one of the doors just to leave room for the uh, under counter drawers to come out. Um, this one, ironically, which was the first one I did, is by far the worst fitting. So when I fitted that yesterday and I was a little bit gutted at how bad it looked, that is the worst one. These ones are really, really good in comparison. So I'm really happy about that. So the last thing to finish this off is handles. Um, I bought six of these type. Ironically, there was only five in stock. So oh, I scratched my worktop already. Damn. Um, so yeah, um, I'll fit all the ones that I can and then I'll have to pick up the other one tomorrow. And there we go. Um, all the handles are fitted, well, bar the one that uh, wasn't in stock. So um, yeah, pretty happy with this now. Uh, the, the handles kind of just finish it off really. Uh, I'm really happy um, with these, how they've turned out. Now, now they're all fitted and um, the handles are on and the clearance for the drawers underneath. I'm kind of forgetting about the, the gaps. Uh, there's obviously the, tiny gap here but I mean you never look down there and I've deliberately put all the the bits with the, the bad gaps at the floor uh, at the well at the bottom end of the cupboards because you never look at the floor when you're doing stuff in the cupboards so you kind of just forget about them um, yeah so this this handles a little bit wonky which is kind of annoying but nothing to do about it now um, I'll learn to live with it um yeah really really happy oh and check out how satisfying this is i didn't plan this but that handle when it's open just goes between those two that's really satisfying and obviously it does smash against these handles but i just have to be a bit careful i might put some bumpers uh, little felt pads on these um so yeah that's done Another thing that happened is this adapter finally arrived, which means I could put this valve on the end, um, which means I could turn the gas on and check for leaks, of which there were none. So I've turned on the hob. That's the first cup of tea in my new kitchen. And it tastes good. So yeah, that just about wraps it up for the kitchen. Um, I've got a few more little bits to do. I'm gonna tile around the hob and I need to put the trim around the windows. And I'm also gonna make a glasses rack that's probably gonna go down in the little corridor around the breakfast bar. But I can do all that while I'm living here. So I'm gonna call it a day for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, I've got loads more of my boat videos up here and some more of my other videos up here. So I hope you enjoy those ones too, and I'll see you on the next one.